In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I transformed my very first workshop, which was a shed shop, into the ultimate shed shop. It took a lot of time and effort to clean everything out and get it prepped to this point, but I'll show you all about it in today's video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Like any good project, we have to start in the beginning with cleaning everything out. total to clean it all out I used the method if I kept one thing I had to get rid of one thing I had to either donate it sell it or getting rid of it altogether like I had to went in the trash so next up I need to take these lights down the shelf the pegboards the couple last little miscellaneous things that are up here and then uh, give the floors a good cleaning and then we'll prep for paint we're looking good so far all right, feeling good about it. Floors got clean for the most part. I did notice, um, look, you can see where the heavy traffic was. Uh, I did notice that this board right here is actually sagging, which leaves me to believe there's not enough support underneath here. So tomorrow I'm gonna need to investigate that. I also have a bunch of the paint chips left over from the garage floor, so I think I'm just gonna mimic the same flooring as the garage. Um, I'll ultimately know what I'm dealing with once I figure this out tomorrow and I think I might actually go and buy some sheets of insulation foam and put it in here and then put some boards across here it all depends on cost and what wood is going for um, that's where we're at I feel good about it hey and we'll get back to this tomorrow let's see what's happening underneath this panel I'm gonna do a little relief cut bop, pull this panel out and see what kind of reinforcing needs to be made. So let's get into this. Ready to see? You can see how it totally dips down right there. All right, we're gonna have to address that. Fine. So this is where we're at. Uh, the bowing was definitely caused by there's not enough support under here, as well as I'm noticing these pavers are sinking in. And then I realized behind this, let's just take a little quick walk. Remember this bad boy? On the back side, see all of that? That is roofing material. And this has sat here for way longer than I'd like to admit, but that's a lot of weight, which is also causing those pavers to bow down. So. I'm gonna get rid of all of this, pull all this out, and then we can reassess what's going on on this side and on this side. <sighs> all right, let's get to it. It's all cleaned out, and I'm gonna keep it this way, so that way we don't get any water issues. This actually slopes this way, which will help with the water runoff. Having this here before basically was just giving me a blockade and for water to sit and, you know, didn't have anywhere to go. Now we're giving it somewhere to go. Now that that's fixed. So originally I was just gonna try and fix this situation. However, I'm now realizing when we built this, we didn't really give ourselves very much structural integrity. Like there's no cross beams, which means there's no cross beams on this side and on this side, as well as this one I'm bummed on. Lindsay, I feel like this is something you should have done better. Yeah, you put a little sister board here, but this, this is flush. So that means this board that was here was just floating, like with nothing to rest on over here. It was putting all the weight here, and maybe a little here. So let's do a little game plan to fix this. You live and learn with things and projects like this. Let's just literally bop, bop, cut all of this out, give some really good framing under here, assess all of that, make sure it's all level. Then we'll get some new boards. We'll seam everything out, make it look nice and pretty. We'll put down some of the stuff to make it look like the garage flooring with the speckles and all that. And then we'll get back to this stuff, which is what I said I was gonna be doing yesterday. And then I dove into the floor. But let's get back to it. Here we go. Looking good. I had to do quite a bit of shimming to get it level, 
but we're there. Um, and I use the plastic ones so they won't biodegrade. Then we'll cut the subfloor, lay that down. But overall, I got a nice little perimeter all the way across for everything to mount down. There was a lot of sap on that wood. So let's clean up and then we'll get back again to this tomorrow. Look at that. All right, well, now that we have the floors back in order, let's screw them down and then keep moving on. All right, we're solid. Got a solid foundation underneath there. No more bowing, everything's level. Now we can get back to talking about the ceiling, the lighting, getting some paint, figuring out what we're gonna do with the walls. Are we gonna insulate? Are we not gonna insulate? It's all gonna come down to pricing, I'm sure, just to, you know, keep it all in budget. But uh, what a successful day. All right, all the walls are up. No insulation, but if I ever need to take them down, I'll then put insulation, so don't come at me about that. I've heard about enough from Instagram. Anyways, I'm gonna go around and caulk the seams where I cut out the old floor and maybe just around the edges just to give a nice crisp, clean, you know, seam situation, even though it's probably overkill, but we're gonna do it anyways. Time to prep for paint. I'm gonna leave the lights up a little longer and then I'll take them down at the very end. But uh, we need to tape off these skylights and the window and the electrical. I think we're good. We don't have any lights in here, but it's fully painted. Oh, it looks so good, so bright. And now it's time to take down the plastic and then let's prep the floors to make them look beautiful and give that whole speckled look to match the garage. Let's get to it. Ultimately, we're trying to mimic this in the back workshop. So, my game plan, I have a lot of this left over from when I did the front porch and I primed it with this. So I'm thinking I'll tint this with hopefully just this black paint. So we make this gray as the base. Boom. We got a bunch of the paint chip sprinkles, a bunch. I mean, you think I wouldn't have used any, but I did. And then after everything's dry, we'll seal it in because I have a bunch of this and I, I don't know, I, I know you can still use it after it's yellow, but ultimately for the floor, it'd be fine. So we'll mix this together and then just do a thin coat rolled over the top and that'll give us this effect, but on wood in the workshop, I mean, we'll never know unless we try. So we gotta experiment using these ingredients. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work though. I'm happy with it once we do a coat of that and then some of the paint chips. I'll work it out in four foot sections. I'll do a paint brush in the corners and then I'll roll out doing four foot sections, do a little sprinkle sprinkle, and then we'll let it all dry and then I'll mix some epoxy and hopefully this all kind of works out to mimic this. I mean, when you got a lot of the paint chips and the sprinkles, why not go heavy with it? I like the way it looks, like if you got it, Use it, am I right? Well, let's let this fully dry and then we'll throw a clear epoxy coat on it tomorrow. Doing some final little touch-ups, painting this little bottom threshold white and the inside of the door where the sprayer didn't get. But we're getting close. We're like 90% of the way. All right, hear me out. I know that this is not for flooring. However, this is great for sealing wood and the flooring that we have in the back is wood. Uh, the epoxy covering that they sell at like Home Depot is for concrete floors, like this, but we're trying to mimic this and we're doing it on wood and I just so happen to have a bunch of this epoxy on hand. Ooh, let's mix up some epoxy and put it on those floors in the back. Fingers crossed that it you know holds up and works well and doesn't bubble. So we'll check back tomorrow in 24 hours. Yep, the floors, 
They look great. I'm stoked that I did the epoxy over the top of it. It holds in the chips amazing, and it's got a nice clear coat to it. All right, now that the floors are done, let's move in some furniture. Just because I had to know if it looked better that way. I, I think I like having one on either side, it's too much. So having one on one side and one on the other is kind of the way to go. But I had to see if I liked it. I put a chair in here to kind of figure out the spacing of where the CNC is gonna go, but let's just actually put the stand together and then we'll get a good outline of what we're looking like in this corner. Without further ado, let's put the CNC stand together. Stand is made. Okay, I took down the lights once before and then I put them back up so that I had lighting in here until the American green light showed up. But now it's time to install these. I have the four feet that'll go on this side over here and then I have some two feet that'll go on this side. I got one already up over here. And then I'll finally take these down and we'll hook these up and we'll change out the lighting. So let's get to it. Look at how much sleeker these are compared to these bulky ones. I have my master electrician here. Say hi, master electrician. He's helping me hook up the drivers. We have three different drivers uh, that'll get hooked up there to the switch. And once they're all hooked up and we can turn it on, I will unplug these. All right, everything's hooked up. Flip the switch. <gasps> Woo! Yes, it looks so good on the beams. Look how thin and sleek that is too. Compared to these, yeah. All right, got the old lights down. Looking good, it's a rainy day. So while it's raining outside, let's assemble some stuff inside. I, uh, I got this cabinet from Harbor Freight. It's the same cabinets that are in the garage. I get asked about these a lot. Super simple to put together, two boxes, so let's, uh, boom, do that. I was hoping that meant that it was gonna already be put together, but it looks like we're gonna actually have to assemble, and then I'm gonna hang it right up there. I got some wall control up today, the cabinet, still gonna do some work with that, but, the cabinet that we just got, the Husky one's gonna go boom right there. So let's unpack it before that rain comes back. Starting to look like a full on shop. Got the tool chest in. I'm gonna hang up the wall control up here. Then I can start putting stuff in the cabinets, hanging stuff up there. Woo, looking good. All right, making some progress. That cabinet got installed last night. I just went and picked up this one today. Uh, this one's a little bit different. I'm gonna go on the back wall right back there. So uh, let's uh, put it together. I got these sound dampening panels off Amazon and I got a set of 12, so I'm gonna go four across and three down and I'm gonna put them in this little area over here which will help hopefully sound dampen the CNC. Um, I'm gonna hang a TV here, so I'll probably do some sound dampening panels around there, and then a couple up in uh, the roof area. So the monitor has a mount, and it's usually mounted on the other side of the CNC, but it's kind of low, and I was thinking about mounting it on the wall here, but I don't want it so far back, so I'm gonna cut a little block, and then that'll kind of bring it out a little and then I can use the mount to attach to the block and then we'll do some cable management here that'll look all nice and then I'll hang the remote with the little holder for that right underneath the monitor Ta -da! and I'll do a light strip around there which will kind of illuminate underneath here boom and I can hang and hoeing and a couple tools right there Cool. Like it, dig it. This side over here, I'm gonna do a strip along the very top, which will give some like up lighting along that area. So let's install some more lights. 
because we don't have enough lights. <laughs> you can never have enough lights. Let's get to it. So there you have it, friends. The ultimate shed shop transformation. I'm stoked on how it turned out. I mean, I loved how my little shop was before, but I wasn't using it to its fullest, and now I definitely think I'm gonna get the full use of this shed shop. I mean, there's more room to grow. I'm sure I'll upgrade a couple things here and there, but here's where it's at at this point, and I absolutely love it. checking out today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ultimate shed shop in the comments until next time friends have a rad day